BTS DNA is a great music video by BTS. It's one of their great comebacks, but when you watch it for the first time, it's really hard to explain everything that's going on or why you feel the way you do. And when I say why you feel the way you do, you know what I mean. The... <gasps> My house. <laughs> the whole purpose of this video from one non-musical person to another is what makes BTS DNA so good? Whoa, that is that's a clap no, that's an eye. Oh my god, that's a that's Jungkook's eye. Man, is that going on your your head? Did you go to a doctor or something? Are you an alien? I mean I would get that checked out. That looks like there's something in there. Your pupils shouldn't look like that. This song is called DNA, but it is so spacey and on a bigger picture that they could have made it even more space-like if they really wanted to. Instead, they started off by showing a nebula that looks like the cat's eye nebula in Jungkook's eye. And yeah, I get what it's trying to say. It's supposed to immediately right off the bat be like, the universe is within us all. Set that tone, okay, good. Or that he's currently a cat and is just really good at disguising it. I mean, have you seen those moves? There's no way a human can do those! Besides the musical aspect of showing the whistle three times, I don't know why they do the three individual zooms on Jude Cook's face, aside from the fact that they're trying to just show his good side, his better side, and his best side. And I just love how on the third one is like, when you see all this nerd stuff appearing on screen, like he was trying to turn the car, and it took the third ignition for like stuff to happen. Okay, so right after this whistling, the first dancing or choreographed scene we see is on that yellowish building or the yellowish pylons with like the ocean in the background. Now we have seen yellow playing a big deal into the teasers, but it didn't really emphasize on what the yellow really signifies. And I know there have been multiple theories about this, but I'm just gonna try to keep this strictly of what happened in the video. So to me, it looks like that this location is supposed to be somewhere mysterious. It could be somewhere in the middle of the universe in some weird alternate dimension, or it's just supposed to show that they can dance really well, but at the same time still time everything together to the whole theme of DNA. And after that they cut to a different scene which is like this 80s 90s really colorful scene that looks like some weird interdimensional changing room. So it goes between these two styles of scenes where it's like either day or night at the yellow pylon area or some version of this like mysterious color for most of the music video. What's really cool too is you have these cuts to like some spacey background or like that giant black hole that turns into the ink thing which I will talk about in a second but to me it almost seems like it's supposed to be like this doorway to like the entire universe universe, like connecting everything. It's supposed to say that everything is connected. And what's really cool about these seven is it's almost like different aspects of the universe brought together and then what I think further emphasizes that is when they do their helix dance move where they, they turn themselves into DNA essentially. And it, it's really interesting because if you think about it that way, you have these seven aspects of the universe that are put together in near DNA. This ties right back into the lyrics of what they're saying is how the universe is in your DNA. And it's really cool because at the end they show them with the moon and they're all standing in a straight line. But wait, we need to get back to those ink blots. So we see the ink blot right before that moon scene at the very end, and we also see it replace the black hole. Is it just supposed to be a reference to the ink artwork that we saw in Blood, Sweat, and Tears Japanese version, or is there something more? Is the ink blot supposed to represent BTS, and then everything else supposed to represent the universe? It's showing how like the black hole and the ink blot is connected, like BTS is connected to the universe. It could just be a visual emphasis on how the lyrics are tying everything together. It's almost like supporting material for the lyrics, but we all know BTS and we know that they have more than that in here. It starts off with a very noticeable whistle by Jungkook, which is deliberately repeated three times. Now, I'm not sure why it's repeated three times. The only thing that I can possibly think of is it's supposed to let you figure out what that whistle sound is so you're familiar with it as the song progresses. This is then continuously heard and then overlaid on top of the acoustics 15 seconds after the whistling really starts. And what's really, really cool is you have this high frequency whistling that's going on with the higher sounding acoustics. You know, it's not extremely high, but it's still on the higher side of things. This is countered by V with this really Really, really bassy introduction verse. In there, what this does is it allows you to hear both at the same time. Because they're so different, it's not like they blend together. It's very clear of both sounds that are going on at the same time. So you're able to focus on V's verse, but still hear that whistling in the acoustic without it being drowned out or forgotten. This is followed by two thirds of the rap line being J Hope. J Hope! and Rapmon or RM as he's going by now. But it's really clever how they go about doing this because they start with J-Hope. And when J-Hope starts, he goes really high. So it's a nice little contrast from V's voice as well, where you had V's bassy voice with these higher acoustics and whistling going, and then it's followed by a verse that's the exact opposite of V, which is, you know, J-Hope's sunny smile with his really, really fast-paced rap, which then flows into Ratmon's deeper rapping. Ratmon's rapping is deeper than J-Hope's, but what it does is it still keeps the intensity. 
So even though you have both V and Ratmon having a lower voice, it's completely different on how it makes you feel. V is that nice warming introduction that gets you warmed up for the song and makes you feel really calm. And then what J-Hope and both Ratmon do is they help hype you up to get into the middle of it. They basically are saying that we're past the intro and now we're ramping up into what we have next. So right after this is where we hit the pre-chorus and the chorus. And what I really like about this is even though we just had Ratmon's really fast, but low voice, this pre-chorus and chorus goes the opposite, where it's a higher voice, but it's much slower. So it's a nice little contrast that we have between the two. And what I really like is it's all just setting up for the breakdown that occurs right after. At this point in the song, you should notice that it's taking this high-low, high-low approach. The song starts off with the high pitch whistling, goes to a low V, to a high J-Hope, to a low Ratmon, and then back to high into the chorus. And let's talk about that chorus for a second. It takes you and makes you feel as if it were an out-of-body experience. And this is still from just the vocals. It has this echoey kind of like spirit effect on them, which makes it sound like you're having an out-of-body experience. It's supposed to emphasize that whole universal genetic vibe that the whole song is about. So what's really interesting is you're going through this, you're getting that just that very like ethereal kind of spiritual vibe, and then right after the chorus, it just brings us right back down to earth with Shuga. He has some of the most real raps in this song, and it makes him sound like the most human out of everybody. They kind of have to just isolate him. You can't really layer too much on top or else you'll lose everything he's trying to say, especially at the tone he's trying to go. He's not really screaming or anything like he does on his August D album with the song August D. So another reason I think he's a great transition is because he is the easiest for Ratmon, in this case, to just transition into. Shuga has these explosive vocals which bounce right back into Ratmon so you don't lose any of the flow that he's trying to go with. And then this is also further emphasized by Jungkook's like rap singing, I guess is what you call it, which then just jumps right back into Shuga's. It's this nice cycle where you have Shuga, Ratmon, to Jungkook, to Shuga, and what I like about this is the first rap that Shuga did in this verse was very calm, and then this is the one where it really builds up intensity, almost like Jungkook fueled Shuga to be like, hold up, I hope you didn't think I was just gonna rap calm this whole music video, and then he's just like, here we go! And this goes right into the second pre-chorus. Here's also where you start hearing changes to the chorus slightly, where it's even more ethereal or universal sound. The end of the chorus starts building up with their voices, and it doesn't just go back into another verse, it starts building up to this conclusion, where you hear more of the vocals going on, more of it's layered on top of each other, and it leads you and drives you right to that very last DNA you hear. It flows perfectly into the conclusion, which is a more intense sounding version of the chorus. And it really ties everything together by adding on these supporting vocals that go on until the last DNA is uttered. And what I love throughout this track is you hear a robotic, but at the same time, like out of body DNA uttered. And it's just once again saying that this is what the song is about and this is what it's coming back to. Even though we're talking about space, we're talking about the galaxy, we're coming back to the fact that it's DNA. And it really hones in on that fact. Now I'm not going to go too much into the lyrics right now, but it's such a big key and important part because of how they say it that it's worth being mentioned. First off, I'm counting the whistling as part of the vocals, and I know vocals is like vocal cords, but it's coming out of his mouth, so it's the same thing. It starts off with that simple acoustic line, right after the whistling, and it sounds like it has just a rhythm guitar and a main guitar going on. So it keeps this simple beat throughout most of the verses in the song, but there's different flavors of it, where they add more drums onto it, maybe a bass guitar, but you still have that underlying beat, where you know if you heard any of the different versions of it, you'd be able to say, that's BTS DNA. I know exactly what that song is. What I like is it continues for the first verse, but you have that little bit of transition period where it starts building up to the pre-chorus and the main chorus, which is that drum line. You start hearing it kick in, and that's when you know that things are starting to flow now. We're, we're moving away from that first acoustic verse into something more intricate, which is what happens as we get into the rap line to make sure that the rap is still being supported properly. It's not something to overwhelm the rap, but you still want something where it has a nice wave to ride on. It flows in perfectly with the chorus and the pre-chorus and the synths that happen in the chorus and the pre-chorus. And the big part of the chorus, or the main part of the song, is it's mainly synths. Like, if you hear it, it really is a lot of synthesizers. And it's not that it lacks vocals, it's that the vocals are very far spread apart and very slowly said, with an effect on them to really drive home the point that the synthesizers are helping to create. It goes with the lyrics and how it's supposed to feel universal and how everything is connected. You're supposed to take a second to really take in what they're saying and how it applies to you and how it makes you feel of how the universe is related to everything and how there's that one person that you're like, maybe, maybe we were a thing, maybe we were a thing, or that one like 
chocolate chip cookie and you're like, that's a thing between us. And it gives them time to show off their dance moves, so that's always a plus. So far, we have our verses going up, our acoustic verses, and that first chorus. And even though the transition between this intro verse and the chorus is very nicely done, with the drumline coming in and it really just intensifying, there has to be a really, really key way of going back. How do we get out of the chorus into the next verse? And what they do is something very interesting because they, they once again play off the space theme. To me, it sounds like they're going through a wormhole. Like it's going through a wormhole to lead you back to like something else. We were just taken in an out of body experience and went into the BTS dimension. And now the echoey sound is bringing us back to like the normal sounding vocals without any effects on them. And it goes right back into the verse with the acoustic guitars, but it has that other flavors that I was talking about, where I think in the one right after you hear more drums and maybe a little bit more bass line. And when I say bass line, I mean an actual bass guitar. And what's really clever is this goes up right again up to the next chorus. They're seasoning these verses with a bit more sounds to let you know that, okay, we are progressing throughout this track, you're hearing more complexities to it, and we're still not done. And these complexities aren't so large that it's gonna take away from the conclusion. It's just enough where you're like, oh, okay, this sounds a little different, so I can tell that there's been like a transition throughout the story that they're trying to tell, but it's not something that you'd be like, oh my God, this is insane. Once again, the second verse transitions right into the chorus. And the chorus also does it too. You hear extra frequencies that are peppered in. And what's really interesting about these extra frequencies is as they're going through the chorus, you hear it building up and building up. It's like they were peppering in the different flavors of the acoustic line right up to where the chorus starts. And then that's when things start escalating a lot. You start hearing that like high pitched frequency in the background, which is actually really common in a lot of EDM songs. And that's the part in EDM songs where you're like, where's that drop though? I hear it coming, I hear it coming. I'm about to lose my mind, give me some space. And it continues this even when you hit the chorus. And at the ending of the chorus, you have two things that can happen. If you haven't looked at the length of the song is it can go back into another verse and continue to something else or go to the conclusion. And actually at this point, we're getting into the conclusion. And what comes next is one of my favorite things of this track. Before any other intensity is added, it takes a pause and all you hear is this sound. That sound is just another cherry on top for any space nerds. So that's a frequency that you would commonly hear from any space movie where an astronaut is trying to communicate to any ground station or back to Earth. They're throwing in these little things that make you really feel that we're not on Earth. We're on a bigger scale right now. We're just some lonely observer flowing through the universe knowing that our DNA will lead us back to that one person. To, co to just coalesce everything, they have this crescendo where you hear all these different spacey, echoey sounds just built up on each other. Along with that, the vocals are also built up just like that. So you have these two different aspects. You have their singing and you have the actual instrumentation and the synths inside that just build up and build up. And it builds up right back up to that wormholy sound. The only thing I can compare it to is like in a space movie, when you see a spaceship going close to a wormhole, the music just gets extremely intense. And then right as they hit the wormhole and they warp through, they just warp to somewhere quiet in darkness, just not knowing where they are. It's almost like the beginning of it, the whistling takes you to this BTS dimension where now you're in their playing field. And throughout the song, they're just taking you to different parts of the universe, to a different musical perspective in your head. And at the very end, you have this wormhole that leads you back to the library, to your bedroom, or wherever you are listening to this track. The universe wrote in our DNA that you should go out with me or else Morgan Freeman will the be universe. sad. Clearly that is a very simplified version of what they are trying to say throughout the track. These lyrics do emphasize on that, but in a more serious and at the same time innocent kind of way, where you do feel drawn to what they have to say. And what they're trying to say is, we were meant to be together, and this isn't something anyone can change. It was written in our bodies, ourselves, our DNA. This track emphasizes that even further by saying this in different ways, just hammering down that main point. Really to drive home that you're being serious, like they are being serious in what they have to say. It's not something lighthearted that you would innocently say, it's like something that they thought about and have come to a conclusion to. That you are yearning for this other person so much that you are just gonna keep on saying this point, regardless if you just met them or not. And this is not something anybody can say. They would have to be so passionate, smooth, and gorgeous that they could probably even get away with saying it to a cinnamon bun, where then like a cinnamon bun would appear in like their future life and be eaten by them just to fulfill that same prophecy or that same destiny that they just talked about. Who is that gorgeous? I just, who would be that gorgeous, smooth, and passionate to do it? I don't know. They hurt us. 
This is one of the most intricate tracks by BTS because of the approach they took to this. They didn't want to do something supremely intense, but at the same time they didn't want to lose that impact that they are known for. And they went with more of a sci-fi theme even though it's called DNA. And yeah, the lyrics did have to deal with the universe, but the way they approached it was so unique. Everything was perfect in terms of balance. They didn't have it almost seem like a sci-fi story where they're on a different planet going through finding your DNA, but at the same time it wasn't just some abstract dancing box. They found this middle ground where they were able to portray everything they wanted, still connected to the fandom and all the theories that you have, and make it seem like that they were in this together with you guys, with ARMY. They keep it so calm, but at the same time, your heart rate still is increasing as you listen to it, because you don't know which way it's gonna go. It's, it's super clever, because I still have that aura of mystery where you still could talk about the music video, and someone else could talk about it too, and have two completely different outlooks on some certain scenes and characteristics, which just keeps the discussion going until their next album, which who knows what that will be, and who knows how it will tie together with the whole BTS run to Wings to DNA to Her to everything. Fantastic job on this track and the rest of the album and I look forward to seeing whatever else you have next. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, it really helps, and subscribe if you're new, I'd really appreciate it, and it lets me know that you want me to do more of these, maybe even more BTS ones. And until next time, peace.